Hi, Western Standard. This is Mark Emery, uh, the publisher of Cannabis Culture Magazine. Said magazine is right here, latest issue on newsstands now all across Canada and the United States. And that's what I do. And this is my lovely wife, Jody Emery, and she's the co-editor with me of Cannabis Culture Magazine. We're also involved in the video uh, broadcast or webcast you're looking at now. Pot TV is recording this interview. And we also, I'm also the leader of the BC Marijuana Party. We ran candidates in the 2001-2005 BC provincial elections. And we had a full slate in 2000. 2001 and near full slate in 2005. In 1979, I read Ayn Rand's Capitalism, The Unknown Ideal, and Atlas Shrugged, and all her other works eventually, as long as, along with the Ludwig von Mises School of Economics, uh, the Austrian School of Economics, Human Action by von Mises, The Law by Bastiat, and all the major texts of the Austrian economic movement. And since then, I have been pledging my life, all 29 of the last years, to getting people out of jail, smashing the state, thwarting the government's uh, pernicious laws, and generally advocating Ayn Rand's ideal of a free and uh, prosperous society based on consent and cooperation. And, of course, you know, capitalism. So what I have done in the last 29 years is, is attack the state's laws that regulate, restrict, and, uh, and basically... Uh, censor human action in order to achieve those ideals of liberty. In the last 18 years, I've been trying to make marijuana legal, but it started out much more humbly in 1990 when I started. Books and magazines about marijuana in Canada were banned, and through civil disobedience, we were able to overturn that law in 1995. I went to jail for Sunday shopping, uh, opening my stores on Sundays in the mid-1980s, and eventually we overturned that law in Ontario as well. I've challenged obscenity laws in the courts uh, when the Ontario Provincial Police in 1990 banned a CD called As Nasty As They Want To Be by the Two Live Crew. So for 29 years I've been attacking the government's regulations and laws that restrict human action and human thought and human freedom here in Canada. In 1990 though I kind of expanded that to a worldwide basis. We started selling cannabis seeds which are ostensibly against the law in Canada though no one has ever gone to jail for it and we started selling these seeds around the world to people who wanted them and raising millions of dollars which we gave away. And in fact between between 1994 and 2005, we gave away over $4 million to groups uh, seeking peaceful democratic change in the political sphere. We sponsored class action suits against the U.S. federal government. We sponsored political parties all over the globe, from Israel to New Zealand to France uh, to all over the provinces of Canada and in the United States. We paid for ballot initiatives in Washington, D.C., Arizona, Colorado, Alaska, and other states, as well as getting hundreds of people out on jail by paying their bail, paying for their lawyers or paying for their various political endeavors going on all over the world. And this is a great campaign because when we started in 1990, there was no worldwide movement to legalize marijuana. And now we have a robust worldwide movement that, by and large, used our seed money, so to speak, to get themselves going. And now we have a very worldwide movement based on that money. But the DEA and the United States Justice Department began to notice how successful we are. And in 1995, when the Canadian government wouldn't charge me for selling seeds, they came up and had the DEA collaborate with the Vancouver Police Department and are now initiating extradition proceedings to take me to the United States where they call me the number one drug trafficking kingpin in all of Canada and they want to put me in jail for a life imprisonment sentence and I'm 50 years old so anything over 15 years is life imprisonment and they definitely want to give me 20, 30, 40, 50, 100 years. Remember they're calling me the most significant drug trafficking target in all of Canada and one of the top 50 in the world and bear in mind I have never been charged or convicted with anything more serious than selling bongs and selling seeds and passing one joint for which I spent uh, two months in jail in Saskatoon in 2004. Since 1999, I haven't been charged with anything more than passing one joint here in Canada. And prior to that, all my charges and convictions are about civil disobedience, nothing unsavory, all about going to court and challenging laws transparently, it's very important, transparently, openly, and with advance notice to the press and the police about what I was doing. If you're going to be a lawbreaker of unjust laws, it has to be done out in the open with complete transparency and nothing sinister should be imposed if you're doing that and that was always my goal by the way I paid all my taxes I know libertarians won't be happy about that but conservatives will I made full declarations of all my income to income tax and to this day I have never been charged with avoiding income tax failing to pay income tax or in any way uh, trying to jip the Canadian government of what they think is rightfully theirs. So I've been a very good citizen. I have broken only unjust laws transparently and openly and that's been my whole career for 29 years this is my wife. She's going to ask me some questions that you might want to know. All right. Well, you've introduced yourself, and you've explained what you did. So 
Um, what is your current standing? Where is the extradition at? Well, here's the thing. You know, the United States has said, you know, basically been saying you're going to get a long, long time here. So. In order to spare my two co-accused, Greg Williams and Michelle Rainey, Michelle Rainey a particular note because she has Crohn's disease and would have a very painful time in any kind of jail. In exchange for those two, uh, my co-accused not going to jail, I've agreed to accept a five-year period of time in custody in Canadian and American jails on a 10-year sentence. Now that's outrageous, but the thing is at least from a Canadian jail where I'll serve most of that sentence, I could have an involvement in my magazine. I would be out, you know, in five years, hopefully in reasonably good health, and at the same time spare my two co-accused from jail. So to me, this is an offer I was willing to consider from the United States Justice Department who sent it thus that offer in writing. Now things move slowly and the Canadian government is reluctant to get involved, but they have gotten involved. So over the next number of months, they will be negotiating will say about my fate, whether I'm to spend time here in Canada or the U.S. or both or neither. And I don't have to accept this deal. We could, in fact, push on and simply try and get the court of public opinion on our side to the degree that we can and influence the Canadian government to do one important thing. They could just simply charge me here and once the Canadian government charges me with the three charges I'm charged with in the United States, trafficking seeds, money laundering, which is spending the money in any, all the different ways we did on charity, and conspiracy with the Americans who bought the seeds. By the way, all consenting adults, no victims here. It's all about ideology. But once I get charged in Canada with those three things, then the extradition would be stopped. So the Canadian government could stop the extradition of myself to the United States by simply charging myself and my co-accused with those three charges in Canada. But they're not willing to do that. They don't like me. The Conservative government doesn't like me. The previous Liberal government doesn't like me. They'd love to see me put away in jail for a long, long time, except there's political blowback to that. So the Canadian government is, is very, very reluctant to get involved in either case because it's all lose-lose for them. So that's where we are right now. We're negotiating. I haven't accepted any deal in writing yet. They're still going to come up with one. And if it isn't satisfactory, then we are going to fight this and we're going to get the Canadian people on our side to oppose this extradition.